confess you in Jesus. So today, we're going to talk about the gift of discerning of spirits and deliverance. Ooh. Ooh. Everybody thinks this is such a scary subject. Come on, who's a bit nervous for it? Be honest. Ah, come on. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk to you what the Bible actually says. Is that okay? So today is part one. Next week, turn to the person next to you and tell them next week is going to be part two, which is recognizing demonic activity in your life and being set free. Okay. We want to know these things. But in order to know these things, we're going to dispel some myths. Okay? You know, if I have to honestly ask, we've been doing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Everybody, when I said, who wants the gift of prophecy? Everybody puts their hands up. Everybody's excited about tongues and interpretation. And when we get to the power gifts of healing and working of miracles, etc., everybody's, woo, yes. So if I have to ask, who wants the gift of discerning of spirits? How many of you will put your hand up? A small handful. Why is that? Because we think discerning of spirits is just seeing into the demonic realm. We think all we're going to do is see demons. No! Say with me, no. Okay. So we're gonna, I'm going to give you a teaching today. Is that okay? All right. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to discerning spirits and doctrines of demons. Okay deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. 1 John 4 verse 1 says, Beloved, that's you. you the beloved. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I want to say the gift of discerning of spirits is one of the most needed gifts in the body of Christ in this day and age. You know, us as a, an apostle and a prophet, we don't know everything. This is why we have a body. Okay? This is why we need one another. Because maybe you called to operate in the gift of discerning of spirits. Now, I didn't say the gift of fault finding. Okay, discerning of spirits. Because we might miss something. We might not see everything. Because, you know, for me personally, I sometimes see into the spirit world. People come in here and I see things in the spirit world. I sometimes see the demonic activity happening around them. Do I broadcast it? No. Sometimes all God tells me to do is pray. Okay. The discerning of spirits, the gift of the discerning of spirits is for the body. And we need it. It's not just a big thing of casting out demons or weird things. That happens. But it's a discerning of what is happening in the spiritual realm. Does this make sense? Amen. Jesus' mandate that we become as wise as serpents and as harmless of dove, as harmless as doves in Matthew 10, 16, implies that we must develop supernatural discernment, the ability to tech, detect motivations. Okay? It's not just about discerning demons, it's about discerning the motivations of the heart. I want to say, just because somebody prophesies, 
Just because somebody operates in the gifts doesn't mean that it's God. Sometimes they are operating under a familiar spirit. And we as the body of Christ need to discern. How do you discern? By the Holy Spirit and by the fruits. We don't discern by the giftings in their life. Okay? What are they promoting? Are they promoting the love of Christ? Are they promoting Jesus Christ? Or are they promoting themselves? Look at me. I'm the big prophet or the big healer. The gift of discerning our spirits will become increasingly important as we approach the end of this age. Because deception will be the hallmark of perilous times. You just go on the internet and everybody's got all kinds of stuff going. And in the end, you don't know what to believe. Okay? We were on our mission trip. Um, we were in traveling and we had to assist in one of the churches where there was a lot of division because somebody had got hold of videos criticizing other men of God where they pull things out of context and defame the men of God. Now I want you to know, I'm not perfect, Dad's not perfect. We say things and it can be taken out of context. And things have been taken out of context. And people have got mad. But when believers start criticizing other believers and men of God, you can discern that that's not of the heart of God. Amen. Don't lend your ears out where there's an active criticism and an active bringing down of God's appointed leaders. If you discern anything, you go on your knees before God and you pray for them. That's God's way. Okay? God's heart is not to go defaming and breaking down people. Because then the church would become a place where everybody that's got an issue will be defamed and broken down. But that's not the body of Christ. It's time we grow up. And it's time we learn to love. But learning to love is also not being blind. Learning to love is saying, God, I desire the gift of discernment. Why? So that I can set people free. Amen. 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 So that I'm not deceived. Tell the person next to you, you're not going to be deceived. So how does the gift of discernment operate? Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 10 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Say each one. That means you. For the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another the gift of faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Okay. So, the spiritual gift of discerning of spirits. I hope you guys are taking notes. Because you know what? If you sit here and you don't take notes, by the time you get past this first door, you're going to have forgotten. You know what I'm saying? Take notes. You've got cell phones. There's an app on your cell phones to take notes. Take notes or get a booklet and take notes. <laughs> okay. The spiritual gift of discerning of spirits, it has the ability to aid the church. It has the ability to set people free. It, listen to this. It has the ability, the gift of discerning of spirits, protects the integrity of what God is doing. 
The gift of discerning of spirits is to help us overcome in spiritual warfare. Uh, the, the discerning of spirits sometimes operate, operates like a Geiger counter. Who knows what that is? When there's a radiation and you walk into a place where there's radiation, the Geiger counter will go tick, 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 tick. It warns you, you can see it's going into the danger zone. And sometimes in the spiritual realm, when you're operating the discerning of gifts, you will just have this, <clears throat> something's not right. It doesn't feel quite right in my spirit. I can't necessarily understand why. But you know what? You've got to ask the Holy Spirit. There's a reason, okay? It's a spiritual detection system that measures the spiritual realities not apparent to the natural senses. Don't look at the outward. We have to look at the spiritual. Because you know what, hey? I'm grateful for men and God that have put into our lives. Because if they'd looked at the outward and the outward reactions and stupidity, I would not be standing here today. But for the grace of God and men and women of God, they discerned that there was something greater in me. And even though I had to go through deliverance at one stage in my life, okay, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. We think if we've got to go through deliverance, it's something to be so embarrassed about. No, I'm free today. Because somebody believed in me and discerned what was in my heart and set me free from oppressing spirits. Come on. I've been in meetings where seasoned pastors have manifested and gone on the ground like spirits. Just because you're a pastor or a leader doesn't mean that you're free from oppressing spirits. But when the truth comes... The Bible says the truth will set you free. Amen. Today I'm bringing you the truth of God's word. Okay. It is a God-given ability or enablement by the Holy Spirit to recognize what is the source of certain spiritual manifestations. Whether they come from the Holy Spirit, whether there's angelic spirits. Come on seeing angels or demonic spirits or is it the individual human spirit nine times out of ten it's just a human emotion and you have to discern past that okay you have to understand the Holy Spirit wants to teach us will you make mistakes absolutely so what we're on a journey of learning in the body of Christ, it's okay to get it wrong sometimes. As long as we are teachable and willing to learn. We speak about the Johan Road revival. But if we're not going to have revival, things are going to fall flat. We'll just be another bless me club. When Apostle Hannah says, who's got a word or a tongue? There should be a queue lining up here. And I'm rebuking you as a body with much love. Okay. God spoke to some of you. And you sat on your seats because you were so concerned what everybody else would think. For your hand road revival to happen so we can change the city. We need men and women who will stand up and say, I don't care if I make a mistake. It's time I be obedient to what our Holy Spirit is asking. It's safe. It's okay. You will not be rejected. Because that's a false spirit that rejects. Many people are by nature discerning. And they, they're perceptive. But that's not the same as the gift of discerning of spirits. Okay? Okay? The spiritual gift of discerning of spirits, you see beyond. 
Let me just give you an interesting scenario. Uh, years ago, when we planted a church uh, in Port Elizabeth, uh, years, years, years ago, we were preaching, I was preaching, and I looked up and I looked to the back, and I saw a man sitting there, and he disappeared, and I saw the spirit controlling him. God opened my eyes in a brief moment, and I saw this thing. I couldn't discern what it was, but I just knew it was a, <clears throat> not a lacquer thing. So later that week, this man came to see Dad and I, and he, he asked, he really wants to work with children. He's got such a calling for children and things like this. And I looked at him, and the Spirit of God came on me, and I operated in the gift of discernment, incorporated with the gift of the word of knowledge. And suddenly the spiritual world opened to me. And I saw him sitting at his computer looking at child porn. Okay. So I said to him, you will never work with children because this is what I see and this is what you're up to. And he looked at me and he went, his eyes changed, his face changed and he, this thing looked back at me. And then it went back inside him and he, he said to me, oh, that was that spirit manifesting, hey. Okay, family, that's now one interesting story. But other times, it's just discerning somebody's motives are not good towards you. And we as a body of Christ need to discern. The gift of discernment is also to understand what is happening and what God wants. When the prophets were here, they discerned in the spirit. Something's coming. They could sense and feel in the spirit. Something's coming. There's a thing brewing in the spirit over this church. Something's coming. Something's about to happen. That's a gift of discernment in operation. Because it's not just discerning demonic spirits. It's discerning what God's intentions are. It's discerning when there's angelic forces in operation. Remember the story in the Bible with Elisha and his servant, and he was so worried, and all the armies were gathered against him. And then God gave the gift of discernment and opened the servant's eyes that he could see into the spiritual realm. And when his eyes opened, he saw angels and chariots of fire encamped around him. That's a gift of discernment. Ah, oh, I would love to see the angels the whole time. I've heard angels. And I've sensed them. But I'd love to have an angel manifest to me. But not everything that manifests is from God. If they're here to promote unity, love, and Jesus Christ and Him glorified, that... Is from God. Amen. You with me? A believer operating in discerning of spirits may be aware of the presence of a demon. He may know what to do about the situation and he can even command the demon to come out. Demons flee at the name of Jesus. Let's stop being afraid of the demonic because we have the greater I am in us. And our Jesus went to hell and trampled Satan underfoot. He conquered Satan and every demonic force. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. There's nothing that can stand against the name of Jesus. Don't let Satan lie to you and tell you, Ooh, don't get involved. I can't do deliverance. This is for every believer. Are you a believer? And you know, there's no such thing as a, Oh, I've got a deliverance ministry. We operate in the gifts as the Holy Spirit wills. Sometimes we'll operate more in one gift 
But the gifts are there for everybody. And from time to time, I have operated in all the gifts. As the Spirit wills. So can you. Would you like that? Come on, imagine. Just, for a, just close your eyes for a moment. And imagine you're walking into a room. And there's somebody there that has been captive by a demonic force. And you can look at them. And you can set them free in the name of Jesus. And they're free. Imagine you lay hands on somebody. And they have no legs. And the legs grow. Working of miracles. Can you imagine? I imagine the whole time. I picture it. What you see. We sing what you see. What do you see? What do you see? If I close my eyes, I see all of you operating. I see you casting out demons. I see you laying hands on the sick. I see the dead being raised. I see the working of miracles. I see prophecy. I see tongues and interpretation. Why? Because God has not just called dad and I. God has called each one of you. There's a call of God going out for each one of you to get over yourselves and step up. It's time. Tell the person next to you, it's time. Not everything that appears to be spiritual is from God. Sometimes it's a demonic manifestation. And sometimes it's just a human spirit. It's okay. We love. We don't judge. Sometimes we've had manifestations in church. And the people have been set free. Sometimes we tell the thing to shut up. Go back. And we deal with the person afterwards because we don't want to hurt and damage. Okay? Sometimes it's a very personal thing. All right? Our aim is to protect, to build, edify. If you're operating in the discerning of spirits and it breaks people down or is it comes from a critical spirit, it's not of God, then rather shut up. Is that okay? When it's the Holy Spirit... Its aim is to see people free. Its aim is to see people encounter the love of Jesus Christ. We speak about the gifts of the Spirit. But it's connected to love. Every gift has got to be motivated by love. It's love. Love says, I will cover you. Love says, I will protect you. Love says, I will fight for you to come to freedom. That's love. When we have insight into the spiritual realm, when we begin to operate in the gift of discerning of spirit, and you begin to sense something, you begin to, uh, you're not sure if you're seeing things or what, your first response is always prayer. Put your hand up. Can you pray? Your first response. Okay? You have simply to talk to the Holy Spirit and ask Him what is happening. Is this from Him or is this from another source? Okay? Very, very important. Sometimes the gift of discernment is a, like a gut feeling. You just know. You can't explain it, but you just... <clears throat> Okay, so ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do with this? Must I just pray? 90% of the time, the Holy Spirit will tell you, pray for that person in this direction and speak their freedom. And sometimes it will mean calling them aside and saying, can I walk with you? Can I love you? Can I set you free? Amen. And sometimes there will be an instantaneous setting free here in the front. Whichever God wants to do. We are submitted to what the Holy Spirit says. 
remember, we always go back to Holy Spirit. We always go back to love. We always have the Word of God as our measuring stick. Uh, Let me see. Sometimes God will reveal to us something in the spiritual realm with the gift of discernment as a warning. Don't go there. You just, or don't do business with this person. Just, <clears throat> we might not all get that. This is why we need one another. Because I might be as doff as a doorpost and my motivation is love and mercy. And I just want to love everybody. But I don't sometimes see what's actually happening behind the scenes. It's okay. Operate in the gift. Come and talk to your leader. Not to be a gossip or a critical person, but just saying, I sense this. And they can say, thank you. We, we are aware or we weren't aware. We will take this to God in prayer. And that's it. You don't go from person to person saying, Ooh. you know that, Pastor Elmery, I sense this Ooh, about her. That's not of God. Let's get real. Let's operate with this gift of discernment with love. How do you know that it's of the Holy Spirit if you put yourself in that person's position? How would you like to be treated? How would you like to be treated? What if you got a demonic stronghold? And some of you have. Some of you, you need somebody to come in and stand with you and set you free so you can run into your destiny. Does that make you bad? No! That makes you pretty much part of the human race. Welcome to the club family. Are you human? Is there any non-humans here? Okay. If there is a non-human here, we'll just pray about uh, the, the spirit of delusions, okay? <laughs> All right. We may not know exactly what is wrong with a person or with his message, but we will sense danger and recognize the warning to be on God. So sometimes people can start out good. But then they begin to give themselves over to other things. When people are not submitted under authority, it's very dangerous. The Bible says, your shepherds watch out for your souls. God has put things in order for a purpose to protect his body. To protect his people. Okay? And when people start coming in and they begin to point to themselves, we unfortunately had somebody in our church that was like that. And I remember the day they took their jacket and said, waved it and said, I'm the prophet in the house. That was a day. Everything inside of me stood up on hackles. I don't care if they give your detailed telephone number. I don't care if they tell you what you ate for supper last night and the, the coconut cookie that you pinched out of the cupboard afterwards. I want to ask you, what is in their lives? What is their motivation? Are they in submission to somebody? Are they accountable? Are they walking in love? Love does not reject Love does not cast out. Love always gives opportunity for repentance. The gift of discerning of spirit is not the following. It's not the gift of suspicion and judgment. Shall I say that again? The gift of discerning of spirits is not the gift of suspicion or judgment. 
insights and perceptions should never be used to gossip or defame another person. Okay? If you send something, you go to one leader. You don't go to 10 different people. Then you're stepping into a satanic trap. Okay? This gift, like the gift of discerning of spirits, like all the other gifts, is always for edification and building up the body of Christ. It is vital to protect others and ourselves. And with an accountability under God-given leadership. Does this make sense? Are you still awake? You're not getting so nervous anymore about the gift of discernment, hey? Discerning your spirits. It's not just to do with demons, okay? Yes, some of you see into the spiritual world. Some of you have had encounters with demonic forces. We will teach you how to deal with that. It's okay. God's going to set some of you so free, you won't know what's hit you. You're going to encounter heaven if you want. If you want. The highest and best use of the gift of discernment is to see what is God doing. So when you see the enemy at work, in somebody's lives or in a situation, you go back to God and ask Him, Father, what are you up to? Why are you showing me this? What am I to do? What is your process in this? The Holy Spirit will talk to you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to teach you. He wants to use you to set others free. How to grow in the gift of discernment. True discernment is birthed out of intimacy with the Father. That's it. If you want to operate in the gift of discernment, get with God. Because everything with the Father comes through love. When you operate in the gift of discernment, because you know the Father's heart, you know that which is real, you're easily able to identify the counterfeit. In the old days, you've heard me say this, in America when they trained people to identify false banknotes, they didn't give them the false banknotes to study. They gave them the real notes, the real thing. And they would handle them. They would feel them. They would look at them day in and day out. And then the day would come that amongst a pile of money like this, they would slip in a false note. And they would go through it fast and stop. Hang on. Go back. This one doesn't feel like the real. There's something not right here. Okay? Get to know the Father. That's the same for every single gift. If you want to operate more in a gift, get to know the Father. Get to know His voice. Because He loves you. And He loves people. And He wants to use you. Maybe you think, I've messed up so bad. I can't be used. I want to tell you, I'd messed up so bad. I'd messed up so bad. I was a young, young pastor and I had a secret. And those of you who've done soul care, uh, uh, inner healing with us, the inner healing course, will know. I had a secret. Because of the abuse I had as a child, I got addicted to porn. Oh, you were a pastor. Yeah, I was a human being caught in something that Satan had trapped me in. But the day came as a young girl in my 20s. I was married. Where God spoke to me. And God called me with His love. And I reached the place where I was so desperate to be pleasing to my father that I didn't care what anybody said. And I went and got help. 
that was honey 1999 9899 okay how many years is that i'm free guess what i do now i set others free because God is about using your very thing that was your weakness to become your strength Amen. to set other free. Give the Lord Jesus a hand. Amen. The other way to grow in the gift of discernment is praying in the Spirit. Amen. Pray in tongues. How much do you pray in tongues in a day? I want to ask you, Paul says, I pray in tongues the whole day. I pray with my understanding, that's in your language that you speak, and I pray in the Spirit. My staff know, the office staff know, they always hear me. I'm praying in tongues. When I go out the door, I'm praying in tongues. When I come back in, I'm praying in tongues. When I feel yucky, I'm praying in tongues. I make it a point. So that my spirit becomes sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Will I make mistakes? Sometimes. Maybe I shouldn't have had that extra peanut butter slice last night. Hey? Sometimes it's just a normal tummy doing things to you. But sometimes God wants to use you and set you free. It's time we desire the gifts. Turn to somebody and tell them, desire the gifts. You don't sound very excited. Desire the gifts. If we're going to make a difference in this world, we have an outreach on the Saturday morning. We've got to operate in the gifts. We've got to operate in the gifts. There was a young girl that came walking up the road and she was dressed very emo. And she came walking towards us and she stopped. And she stood and she looked at us. And then she turned and she walked the other way. That was a demonic spirit pulling her away. But you know what we did? We prayed for her. We've got to operate in the discerning of spirits when we're out there. We're going to listen to our friend, the Holy Spirit, when he says, don't go there, go here, pray for them, shut up, do something, don't do something. You see, me as a person can do squat. But when I partner with Holy Spirit, I get to know his voice because I'm talking to him in tongues. I read the word. I know what the word says. Read the Bible for yourself. You have to. Because with the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Use the gifts of the discerning of spirits. Don't hold back. Even if you're just starting out, God can use you powerfully. Sometimes you will discern the need to do spiritual warfare. Really pray. You sense something. Pray. Then always remember the golden rule. God's heart is always to redeem and to restore. Say with me, redeem and restore. Say it again like you mean it. To redeem and to restore. So, let me give you another interesting example. Uh, two, three, about three years ago, before COVID, we had active Satanists in our church. And the Lord led me the one day to give the man a prophetic word. And then later on, things began to manifest, and we sat with him and began to deal with some really deep issues with him and his family and we were challenging him to repent and he said to me if all these things you say about me is true why did you then give me a prophetic word 
And I said to him, because God still loves you. God still loves every Satanist, every witch, every witch doctor, every Sangoma, every occultist. God loves you. You are a human being that he paid for with his life. That's why God gives you a word to sometimes give you a chance to repent and encounter him before you end up burning in hell for eternity. God wants to restore. God wants to redeem. This is why we have home cells. Start practicing the gifts. Come on, I dare you. Church, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to go out there and practice the gifts. You do hear from God. I'm, I'm being at who here has heard from God. You all hear from God because you're sitting here today. You all hear His voice. He called you. He asked you, will you come and give your life to me? And you hear today because you said yes. If you haven't yet said yes, we will pray for you afterwards and introduce you to the most beautiful person, the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord, the one who gives supernatural gifts to help you survive and walk and conquer in a supernatural age. I like science fiction, but the Holy Spirit and His gifts is far more than science fiction. Okay? The Holy Spirit is better than any Marvel comic, any Superman, any whatever game or anything. I know the Holy Spirit. And He's good. And the more I taste the Holy Spirit, the more I want Him. Where are you in your life? That, my family, is the gift of discerning your spirits. So I'm setting up a foundation for next week. Next week, because you understand now how the gift of discernment works. It's not to embarrass you. It's not to expose you. It's not to make you feel bad about you. It's to set you free and enable you to set others free. Next week, I'm going to deal with you about how we're going to deal with you, about how the devil comes to entrap you, how he, you're not possessed, but you get oppressed. He takes a chain and he binds it to your leg. Sometimes we're not even aware of it. Sometimes it's a generational thing. Jesus Christ wants to set you free. And next week, you're going to learn and recognize, is there something in my life holding me back? And you are going to walk into your freedom. Can I ask everybody to stand? You're all I need, Jesus.